All right, so you can find the, um, let's see here. Oh, I don't wanna cancel the meeting, sorry. <laughs> you can find the uh, assignment description for your final on Canvas. I just uploaded that as, I as you guys were waiting on me to, to do that. So um, if you want to, you can go ahead and follow along with me. So um, like I just stated, there are um, many changes that I've made in light of this new environment that we are in, the fact that we're all online, um, and it's going to be a little more difficult to perhaps do some of the things that I had imagined us to do for this assignment. So um, just a couple of things that are still the same. So the due date is April 24th, so that is actually next Friday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I have been trying to be a lot more flexible with my latest assignment policy and give you guys more of a grace period. However, for this final, I, I kind of can't do that because, again, I have to grade these pretty quickly and submit those grades officially to Buckeye Link. So faculty members also have a timeline like students. And so please make sure you're getting your portfolio in before the deadline because unfortunately I won't be able to accept any late submissions. I, of course, if you're going through a very serious situation, um, like a health matter, um, reach out to me in advance. Uh, but you know, if you reach out to me an hour or two before the assignment is due, there's not really a lot that I can do at that point. Um, and then also the writing portfolio was originally worth seven, or I'm sorry, 100 points, and now it is worth 70 points. So again, here I'm just trying to lower the stakes a little bit to make this assignment a little less stressful. So um, you guys might remember at the beginning of the semester and kind of throughout the semester, I told you guys how it's really important for me that this class is real world or has a lot of real world application. Um, I know the current world that we're living in right now feels a bit weird, but once we get out of this, um, it is still going to be very important for you all to be able to demonstrate and proof, right? that you have certain writing, writing capabilities and, and competencies. And so um, I always thought it was kind of pointless for students to take an exam for a writing class. Um, because again, you, for me, mastery of the material is through your written communication for this course. And the same applies when you are applying for an internship or an entry level job position. Um, it's not enough just to bullet point your skills in a resume more and more um, employers want you to actually show that you have these skills. And so with that being said, I thought this would actually be a really cool opportunity for you guys to start creating what we call a portfolio. So it essentially showcases your work so that you can kind of put you know, the proof in the pudding, if you will. And so what I'm gonna do right here is um, essentially uh, discuss all the different working components of this final. Um, and then, of course, if you guys have any questions, just submit them to the chat function there. So um, first thing I'd like to discuss that you will include in your digital writing portfolio, which I'll explain the platform that we're going to use for this writing portfolio um, later on in lecture today. Um, I want you guys to create what we call like a short biography. And that's essentially for you to um, describe your professional brand identity. So I'm not necessarily looking for like where you grew up and things of that matter. It's more so, you know, how would you describe yourself as a professional? And, and I put here, if you haven't really thought about that, you should really start to because those are the type of questions that you're going to be asked in a job interview. It's not enough to say, for example, that you're a hard worker. Can you give an example of that, right? Because that tends to be a, a buzzword among interviewees. You know, I'm a hard worker. Well, what's an example of that? So um, the biography is very short and that is actually gonna go directly on the website that we're going to use to create our digital writing portfolio. It isn't something that you have to turn in separately uh, with the writing portfolio. So keep that in mind. Um, so it's about three to four sentences or so. And then also what you will need to do is upload your most recently updated resume or CV, well, whichever one you use, um, and, and make sure that this resume is realistic in terms of what you would actually use in a job interview if you are planning to go into the communication industry broadly. It doesn't have to be like specifically for journalism or PR or marketing, just a broad resume that covers, you know, some, some of your qualification skills, things of that sort, uh, previous jobs that are kind of related to the communication industry. If you don't have any at this point, at this point, 
Uh, don't stress out or anything like that. Just put what you do have. Um, if you still have some anxieties about your resume, it's not something that you've actually taken a look at or worked really hard on, please reach out to me. Believe it or not, um, I'm a nerd and I love to look at people's resumes. So again, if it's something that you really you know, want some critical feedback on, um, reach out to me in advance and I'd be more than willing to help you out with that. And then um, you're going to write what we call a reflective essay. And this is also pretty straightforward. So you're essentially going to write about your, um, your experiences as, as a writer and how you've progressed. And not just you know, in this semester. I mean, you can definitely draw from your experiences that you've had in this class. But really think about your initial experience with, with writing, it, whether it's in a formal academic setting or more of a personal setting, like creative writing, like poetry, fictional writing, things of that sort. So what I would like you to demonstrate in this reflective essay is again, your insight on how you've improved or your progress as a writer. Um, and again, it doesn't just have to be in this, in this class setting. And so to kind of guide you through this reflective essay, I have um, a few points that you guys might want to consider. So again, convey how your writing has improved over time that's beyond this classroom. Uh, make sure that you guys are providing specific examples. Um, so you can maybe talk about your first feeling of, you know, feeling proud of your writing. Maybe that was in the eighth grade when you won a, a writing award, or um, maybe you can talk about the first time that you felt shameful about your writing. Maybe it was a, a grade that you received from a, a teacher back then, or maybe it was something that someone else said about your writing and it made you feel less vulnerable, right, to share your, your writing. So talk about all of those experiences in your reflective essay. Um, and if you have experienced some challenges, which I'm sure many of us have with, with writing, can you kind of elaborate on how you have attempted to mitigate those challenges or cope with those challenges, how you've improved and learned from those difficulties? Um, and here I'm just uh, talking about some things that maybe you might want to avoid. So one of them being, you know, don't just summarize, um, you know, I wrote, you know, a press release for this class and this is what it was about. Again, it should really more so be a reflective essay. Uh, make sure that you're providing, again, very specific examples. And um, don't just write for me as your professor. Again, the great thing about this assignment, guys, is that you can actually take this writing portfolio and uh, you know, use it in a job interview. You can show it to a prospective employer. So if you're writing just you know, for me or me as your audience, that's gonna limit, I guess you can say, the impact of this reflective audience or of this reflective es essay. So make sure that you have a broad audience in mind, whether that's prospective employers, um, your professors, other people who you might wanna collaborate with with your writing, um, really keep those people in mind as well, not just me as your professor. All right, any questions over that? All right, so moving on to the next component of the uh, digital writing portfolio. Um, so what I ha had you guys do, um, or at least what students have done in the past is uh, write an additional press release um, uh, because we've already written one, of course. But uh, I think that might be a little bit difficult to do given what we're going through. I mean, I'm sure businesses are not really holding too many events at this point. Um, so that would be hard for you all to number one, find a, you know, an event for, to write a press release about, even though press releases aren't just about events, but those tend to, tend to be easier to write. And um, you know, interviewing people, you know, everyone's just kind of in their own world, even though we're, we're kind of all going through some of this, the same stuff. And so with that being in mind, I didn't want to add, you know, more of a challenge to this assignment. So you guys aren't going to create an additional press release. What you will do instead is um, evaluate the university's response to students during this COVID-19 pandemic. And so I was kind of going back and forth, guys, as to whether or not I wanted to do this because it seemed Again, we've been inundated with COVID-19, but I think this is a really great opportunity for you all to show and illustrate to prospective employers that you have critical thinking skills, right? That's one of the top um, 
you know, skills that employers are really looking for. Can you evaluate communication messages? Can you pose recommendations, right? That is something that's really key that, that people are looking for when they um, are hiring folks. Can you provide solutions to, to problems? And so, again, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and um, assign this in your writing portfolio. So you all will, again, do an evaluation over Ohio State's communication response to students, to you all. And this will be kind of cool because you, you, you are the target audience or one of the target audiences for their communication response. So you can essentially, you know a lot about this topic in terms of like how they've been communicating with you and you can provide this feedback, which again, I think is really, really cool. And so this evaluation will essentially be in an essay format, as I put here in the description. And so if you can also make sure that you begin the evaluation with um, this statement here. And, and again, you can just copy and paste that just to kind of, and the reason why I have that statement there is to kind of give you guys a little more guidance as to how you should begin this evaluation. Um, because I can already hear like some students saying, well, how should it be formatted? Um, you know, how many this and how much that? And I've also indicated the length um, a little bit later on here. So in your essay, um, your evaluative essay, I should say, um, you're going to answer these questions. I'm going to go slow here because there's kind of a lot of con content here, but it, it does flow. So um, the first thing I'd like you guys to do is identify and discuss two spokespeople for the Ohio State University um, communications plans. That's actually what it's supposed to say there. So I'll go ahead and correct that. Um, and so that could be, you know, maybe you heard from, you know, uh, the advising office. Maybe you heard from President Drake, which I'm sure you have. Maybe you heard from Provost um, Bruce McFerrin, right? Um, so just talk about two spokespeople for the university that you've heard from. And then from there, kind of describe, you know, how are they qualified uh, to speak on, on the matter? briefly in just two to three sentences. And the reason why we do that is we wanna make sure that our spokespeople can actually speak to the issue at hand in any type of communication plan that essentially helps to um, enhance the credence of our, of our messaging. And then um, what I'd like you guys to do is to discuss the channels that were used or are used because we're still kind of like, you know, going through this. Um, what kind of channels are used to communicate those messages? Was it email? Was it social media? If it was social media, what specific social media outlets? And so given that they are trying to communicate to you all, to students, do you feel, and again, from the student perspective, do you feel like those methods were actually effective? And, and once more, just explain your response in two to three sentences. And then from there, um, you know, analyze whether or not you believe the key messages were distributed in a timely manner. So I personally, and you know, again, you guys don't have to take this stance. I really thought that the Ohio State community or the Ohio State administration did a good job in terms of being proactive about COVID-19. I mean, even when we were meeting in person, I'm sure you guys can recall that we received uh, numerous emails from Provost McFerrin. And so maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is really be specific in your identification. So in other words, um, outline when these messages were distributed to you all. What were the dates and, and the time and what have you in chronological order. So you can bullet point that point, actually, if, it, if that helps. And then from there, go back to that essay, you know, writing format and discuss what exactly was in the email, for example, or in the social media post, what topics were covered, essentially. And whether or not you feel like, you know, the issue at hand was, was discussed effectively or some of the contributing factors were discussed effectively. And this part of the um, evaluation is a little bit longer, four to eight sentences. And then um, from there, you're going to kind of figure out whether or not you believe that resources available to students were clearly identified in the messaging. If so, explain. If not, explain. I'm just asking you guys to support some of your claims. And then do you feel like, based upon the messaging, that students were able to act accordingly and, again, effectively based upon those instructions? And then the final part of this evaluation, which is a, a bit more robust, um, so uh, if you were in charge of this really challenging communication effort um, for, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic for Ohio State, more specifically, not for the nation, <laughs> um, what would you do differently? So, you know, what are some of the topics that you feel like um, needed to be discussed, perhaps, but were, were not discussed? 
Um, what type of communication channels would you use in order to make sure that uh, students actually see and understand those messages and more importantly, remember those messages. It's not enough just to expose people to communications. You wanna make sure that that type of message or that message in general has an impact on attitudes and behaviors. So how would you actually ensure that that could be achieved? Um, if you felt like the university did a really great job in their communication effort informing students, um, provide specific examples of that as well. So in this part, again, it's a little bit longer. I'm asking you guys to explain and make a case for your claim in about eight to 12 sentences. So this part is a little lengthy, but honestly, um, you know, a lot of this information can be found online, especially the information in terms of like when emails were sent out and the content. Um, however, I don't want you guys to copy and paste information. This is literally your evaluation. This is your opinion in, in, in essence. And I know throughout the semester, um, I've said, you know, we don't really do opinion writing in this class. Uh, but for this evaluation, um, it, you can state your opinion as long as it's supported by specific examples and, you know, maybe outside resources. Another thing that you might want to consider is, you know, whether or not or how other universities responded to COVID-19 and what were some of their more specifically communication responses. So again, this is your uh, professional evaluation. And the reason why I'm having guys do this is because um, you will be called upon in, in the communication industry to make specific re recommendations to problems, to crises like you see here um, at Ohio State. And so I think this is still a really great opportunity for you all to showcase this in your writing portfolio. Uh, any questions over that? Okay. All right. So, and then the uh, next thing that you're going to do is just revise your feature article and press release. And as I was looking at your grades this morning, guys, I completely forgot to um, release your press release grades. Those, those are actually have already been graded. So I'll go ahead and do that after class. My apologies for that. I'm actually really surprised that no one emailed me <laughs> about press release grades. Um, but yes, I will definitely release those later on today. Um, if you don't see it, just email me uh, tomorrow and I'll uh, make sure that you get that feedback um, and also revise your feature article. As a, a reminder, um, I won't have those graded until this Friday, um, but that still gives you guys a whole week to revise, you know, the feature article um, and the press release. Uh, the press release actually you can start revising that earlier. So. And then uh, last thing here, you are going to write a SWOT and audience analysis. So you're also going to showcase your marketing writing skills, which are very applicable to this industry. So last class, I believe I talked about uh, marketing communications and you know, SWOT analysis, which once more is an analysis over a business. It essentially evaluates their strengths, weaknesses, external opportunities, and external threats. And so you all will do that for a business that you've already been assigned to on Canvas. And in just a second, I will reveal your assignment. You can find that under the people section on Canvas. And from there, you're going to write an audience analysis, again, over a target audience that you've already been assigned to. And again, this is for a hypothetical marketing campaign. You're not actually doing this or anything. Just pretend that you're a marketing specialist and you're in charge of this campaign um, for this particular business and you need to target, you know, again, this uh, specific audience. So if you've been assigned to Catch and Fetch Doggy Daycare, their marketing campaign, for that campaign, their audience is millennial or are millennial pet owners. And I specified the age range just to kind of give you guys a little bit more guidance. If you've been assigned to do a SWOT analysis over Planet Fitness, um, what you all will do is uh, do an audience analysis over Health Conscious Men. Again, the age bracket is, is designated there. If you've been assigned to do a SWOT analysis over Stonewall Columbus, you're going, you're, the target audience for that campaign is LGBTQ college students. If you've been assigned to We Rock the Spectrum Play Cafe, your target audience is single parents, 30 to 45 years old. And if you've been assigned to 11th Candle Company, um, your target audience is Gen X female working professionals. So let me go ahead and reveal your assignments. If you go to, again, people, you don't have to follow along with me, but I just wanted to go ahead and show it to you all. So these are individuals who have catch and fetch doggy daycare for their SWOT analysis. So once more, you're going to do a SWOT analysis for this business. 
They're going to evaluate their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then from there, you are going to discuss the target audience for that campaign, which are millennial pet owners. Here are the people for 11th Candle Company and Gen X Female Working Professionals. Here are the folks for Planet Fitness and Health Conscious Men. And let me know if you can't see this. I'm assuming that you guys can though. Stonewall Columbus and LGBTQ, um, or LGBTQ, excuse me, college students. And then finally, we rock the Spectrum Play Cafe and then Single Parents. Now, when you go to write the SWOT analysis, and let me see, I actually don't think I attached it in the assignment folder, so I will do that after class as well. I just wanna make sure everything is in one place just to make it easy for you guys. Um, let's see. I would like you guys to use this SWOT analysis table that I've created for you all. It's just easier that way. So you're just going to bullet point um, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the business that you've been assigned to. You will need a total of five per category. So five strengths, five weaknesses, five opportunities, five threats. Um, when you are bullet pointing those factors that you've identified, make sure it's in brief sentences. And honestly, it can just be a word. Um, you don't have to really describe it in a lot of detail, but if you feel like it's unclear in terms of why, you know, uh, location, uh, would be an opportunity you can explain that briefly but i'm not looking for an essay format just bullet point your responses and that should be you know fine and then for your audience analysis in the um, assignment folder there is um, a a word document that i created for you all where um, you can use websites to help you to get demographic and psychographic information that again you will need for your audience that you've been um, assigned to. Now I also put here that this is just a start. So if you find information elsewhere, as long as it's a credible source, you can use that for your demographic and psychographic information. Another source that you might want to use are, you know, magazines and newspapers. Um, I will say you're not going to find like um, a document that says psychographic information for LGBTQ students or college students. Um, you're going to have to kind of draw from different sources. So you might want to look up an article about values of those in the LGBT community, because again, uh, values are, you know, psychographic information. Um, so again, you're, you're, you're going to need to be a little bit creative in terms of pulling from different sources as long as they're credible. And that's why I gave you guys some, some sources to start with, but you might not be able to find everything here. Um, you might have to extend your research a bit. You don't want to make assumptions about your target audience as well. So that's why you guys have to provide support in terms of when you're describing your key audiences. You can assume that, for example, all LGBTQ college students are liberal, are progressive. Uh, many of them might be, but uh, you don't want to make that assumption. You don't want to engage in stereotyping. So make sure you have support for your audience analysis. I know I keep saying that, but um, we don't want to engage in stereotyping, um, you know, because that, that, that just looks bad. And when you actually go to um, show this to a prospective employer, uh, they're going to be looking for whether or not you're supporting your audience analysis claims. Speaking of that audience analysis, uh, that summary is going to be eight to 12 sentences. Um, and again, you're going to need to include demographic and psychographic information and describe which channels are most appropriate to communicate through um, when you're trying to reach to this audience. If it is, you know, radio, um, you know, identify specific radio stations that they might listen to. If it's social media, what specific social media channels, um, make sure that you're a little bit specific in terms of your recommendations. So does this make sense, this final part here? So you're going to write a SWOT analysis over the assigned business or the business that you've been assigned to, in addition to the audience analysis for that campaign that's also been assigned to you. 
And the summary is just that it's in a paragraph format. You're not going to bullet point that. The only thing in this section that you're going to bullet point is the SWOT analysis. And I'll go ahead and upload that document for you guys. It's already on Canvas, but it's in a different spot. And I don't want you guys to be like, where is it? I just want everything in that assignment uh, folder. All right, so you might be wondering, um, how are we going to create this writing portfolio? What I would like you guys to do is use a website called clippings.me. So clippings.me, I'll go ahead and show it to you guys, is one of the you know, platforms that writers use to essentially create a, a digital writing portfolio. And um, I, I like to use it because it's user friendly um, and you can customize it as, as well. You can customize your link, you can add your photo up there and things of that sort. So let me go back to the, let me see, example portfolio that I have here. And what I tried to do for you guys, this example portfolio, just to be a little more descriptive, is to indicate the grade that this student received. Um, now, oh, sorry. Oh yes, so uh, even though I put 91 out of 100, remember, you know, it was originally worth 100 points, you'll have to contextualize that a bit. So this person received an A minus. So here's her biography. She has her name clearly stated here. Um, you know, maybe she could have put strategic communication student or strategic communication student at The Ohio State University, something a little more descriptive. Now, in the past, I did not require students to submit a resume with their writing portfolio. This is something that I'm doing new this semester. So also keep that in mind when you're looking at this sample. So let's go through some of the visual components that you probably will need to consider for your writing portfolio because the presentation matters as well, not just the content. Um, so you can, like I said, really customize this part and um, you know, have dividers if you will, you don't have to, but it helps to kind of like clean up um, the portfolio a bit. Um, what I would like you guys to do is to clearly label each document type so that again, the prospective employer knows, you know, what you're writing um, about in the actual document type. So if you're writing a press release, put that there, feature article, et cetera, et cetera. And it looks like she's added some things on here since she's taken my class. So again, keep that in mind as well. This is her actual um, portfolio. Oops. Now, what I'm noticing here, and again, this is probably because she's actually still using this, um, but keep in mind, guys, when you are uploading your clips or your documents onto this website, if you can in the assignment, or I'm sorry, the document description, if you can put that you wrote this for a class and that you don't actually work for the company that you are writing about, especially for your press release, that will be very helpful. Um, only because again, this is gonna be published publicly and you don't want to you know, come across as if you're representing that, that company. So again, put that in the document description. Um, and if you actually go into clippings.me, which again, you all will have to create an account, um, you'll see how to, how to do that. Should be pretty straightforward. If you can't find it, please email me and I'll help you with that. Speaking of creating an account, I recommend that you guys create an account using a non-OSU email address. And the reason why I say that is because I would imagine that many of you guys will want to continue to use this writing portfolio once you graduate from Ohio State. Um, but funny thing is, once you graduate, I think you only have three months of access after graduation to your email. And then that's it, three or six months. I can't remember what it is. And so um, if something happens with your Clippings account, I would hate for it to be a situation where you can't get into your email because you're no longer an Ohio State student. So that would be my recommendation if I were you guys. If you wanna use your OSU email and you later change it, that's fine as well. Up here, um, I believe she used one of the um, uh, sample photos that's provided for you guys once you actually go to create your clippings um, portfolio. You can use your own photo if you would like. I think there was an option where you can actually put your picture here. Again, you'll be able to see all that on the, on the uh, back end. Let me go back to the assignment description just to make sure I'm not missing anything. 
Um, so yes, this is a free platform. You don't have to pay for anything. You can upload up to 10 um, documents for free. Anything beyond that you will have to pay for, but luckily we are not going to be uploading more than 10 documents. Um, so when you guys go to submit this, I'm going to state this kind of, you know, slowly. Um, make sure that you do two things. So you're going to submit one document that just has the new documents that you will need to submit for this writing portfolio. That includes your reflective essay, your evaluation um, over the COVID-19 communication response here at the university, and then the SWAN audience analysis together in one document. So if you can, like maybe copy and paste everything so that it's on one document, you're going to submit that onto Canvas, okay? And then also what you're going to do is submit the writing portfolio link at the end of that document or in the comment section on Canvas, if you will, whatever is easier for you, so that I can actually look at your writing portfolio. That is key, guys. If I don't have access to your writing portfolio through the link, I can't grade it. So please do not forget to include that. I cannot stress that enough. The reason why I'm having you guys upload the um, new documents into like one, just, you know, one uh, Word document or PDF is because I actually want to give you guys feedback and I won't be able to do that on your website if, if that makes any sense through Canvas. So that's why I'm having you guys submit that, you know, in one document. But what you will do on the actual website is put all of your documents that I've talked about. So you're going to put your revised press release, your revised feature article, your reflective essay, your biography, that's actually gonna go directly on the website, your resume, um, if you're getting something marketing, um, I'm sorry, your SWOT analysis and audience analysis, all of that is going to go onto your website, okay? So I'm gonna pause here, because you know, like I said, I, I, that can be a little confusing for students. And in fact, let me see if I can find, I don't think I'll, I don't think there is one here, no. Maybe I can do another video in terms of showing you guys more explicitly how to submit that so that there isn't any confusion. Um, but it just helps me out with grading because again on Canvas, I can't like actually make comments on your website. Um, and so that's why I'm having you guys submit a, a Word in PDF or PDF version of your the new documents that you have to uh, create for your portfolio. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if it doesn't, just email me. And like I said, I, I might create a separate video where I give you guys like a little more guidance on that. And then just some last minute, not last minute, but some last tips. Um, grammar, punctuation, AP style uh, still applies, especially if you're going into PR. Um, so triple check everything. I cannot stress that enough. I know it sounds silly, but people have been looked over for a job position because they misspelled something or because something didn't sound correct or, um, you know, just wasn't grammatically correct. So make sure that you guys are checking everything. If you want me to check your portfolio, I'd be more than happy to do so as long as you contact me in advance. And then also I put here, and I think this is a very important point, I'm going to be grading this not from the perspective of your professor, from an academic perspective. I'm more so going to be grading this from the perspective of, you know, your boss, someone who is looking to hire you, is, is looking to whether or not you're actually illustrating some of these core writing skills that I'm looking for in a prospective employee. Um, here, I already talked about how um, when you go to upload your documents in the document description, make sure that you put that you actually did this for a class and that you don't represent the organization that you're writing about. Obviously, you don't have to do that for the reflective essay or the evaluation um, over the communication response for COVID-19. Again, just some other tips. You can customize your, your link. Um, I have some examples, like I said, in the actual assignment folder things of that uh, uh, sort. Um, a question that I sometimes receive from students is, um, I'm working on something similar in my other class, or I'm working on a project in my other class and I wanna include it in this you know, writing portfolio, can I? Um, I would hold off on uploading that until after you've received a grade because it's gonna be a little challenging for me to figure out which content on your writing portfolio is for my class and then which content is for another class or just for another job. So just make sure whatever you submit, only the documents that are for this class should be on that website. And then after I've given you the grade, after you're done with the class, you, I mean, it's your portfolio, you can upload whatever you want to. All right, I, I believe that takes care of everything. I know that was really detailed, but I just wanna make sure that 
you all are clear since this is technically your your final not technically this is <laughs> your final um like i said in the past students have really enjoyed this assignment because it, it is so applicable um to to real world uh conditions employers really are going to want samples of your work and i think this is just a great way to to rise to that occasion so any questions at all go back to the chat All right, so Megan put for the SWOT analysis, what exactly does the business have to do with the audience reports? That's a really great question, uh, Megan. So if you go back to, if you remember, I shouldn't say go back, if you remember what I talked about um, last class in terms of the marketing communications um, plan or marketing uh, campaign, um, the SWOT analysis and the audience analysis are two components of what we would have to do in the campaign process. So I'm just gonna go through that really quickly. So the first thing that we need to do if we are in charge of a marketing campaign is to figure out what issue or problem that we want to focus on or address in our campaign. So that is definitely step number one. We also wanna to get to know our client or the business that we work for a little bit better. And what I mean by that is we wanna conduct this overall analysis and evaluation over the performance and other key factors related to the business. That's what we call a SWOT analysis. So SWOT analysis is when we're analyzing the business's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then after that, um, we figure out what is our campaign goal. So that's our goal statement. You guys don't have to do that for this project, but again, I'm just going through the campaign process so that you can kind of uh, contextualize the SWOT analysis and the audience analysis a bit more. And then after you've solidified your goal statement, then you're going to figure out who do you want to target. So based upon our SWOT analysis, our goal statement, who's going to be the most affected or the most important for this you know, campaign. So that's where the audience analysis comes into play. So you're going to select you know, audiences that you want to target, that you want to reach in this campaign. You're going to do what's called an, um, um, a customer profile or an audience analysis where you include you know, their demographic and psychographic information, as well as some information in terms of how you should communicate to them um, in this you know, campaign. And then you implement strategies and tactics. Of course, before that comes market research, and then you evaluate whether or not your efforts were successful. So the SWOT analysis is more so your analysis over the business that is you know, in charge of this campaign or that you're doing this campaign for, I should say. And then from there, who should we target right, for this campaign? That's where the audience analysis comes into play. So hopefully that, that clarifies things a, a little bit. I know it seems like I'm kind of like taking out parts of the campaign process in the way I am. It would be way too much to, you know, make you guys do an entire campaign for a final at this point. Um, but the SWOT analysis is a little bit separate from the audience analysis to answer your question more directly, Megan. Uh, the SWOT analysis is, is just about the business. And then from there, you think to yourself, well, based upon this business, who would we want to target? in our campaign and that's the audience analysis so you don't have to you know write about the business and the audience analysis you could say something like you know in order for uh stonewall columbus to uh, to effectively reach lgbtq uh, students they would need to you know promote their efforts on TikTok or on youtube you could say something like that but you don't have to talk about the actual characteristics of the business and the audience analysis because again audience analysis is an audience analysis so hopefully that makes sense let me know if it doesn't great question megan any other questions Okay, well, if there are no further questions, thank you guys so much for attending lecture today. 
even though this is my last lecture, live lecture, that I will still be available to you guys via email or if you want to do a Zoom meeting. Anything that you guys need, of course, within reason, but um, you guys are reasonable people. I've, I've missed you all so much in class, and I do hope that I've, I've made this experience a little bit easier for you all. So again, reach out to me if you need any assistance, and I'll be in touch soon with uh, Thursday's uh, check-in. Take care.